Uh, tonight we'll be starting on a series on the family altar and um, what a way, I mean, what a good place to begin at the um, beginning of a year like this. So we want to look at what the family altar, what the family altar is. Uh, in the course of pastoral counseling, uh, lead to some issues do crop up things that will be that will seem unrelated and then in the course of discussion back and forth and you discover that there are quite a number of Christian homes where they don't have family altars the father will wake up mother will wake up they will pray on their own in their rooms children will wake up and everybody will go about their normal duties and you'll be wondering how come there is no formal time of coming together as a family when you pray together and so it's important for us uh, to look at it even if you've been having it there are still nuggets that you can learn from the word of god to make it better amen now so the family altar one what it is now the family altar simply means a place of family bible study prayers and worship time in the home a place of family bible study a place of prayers and a place of worship in the home not in the office not in the car there are times that because of exigencies that the family altar will have to be hosted in a different place in a different location maybe you have to get out of the house very early and uh, you are driving and you know you're in the car rather not having the family altar the family altar can be had inside the car or you are traveling you know flying across time zones and all that and uh, morning you are in transit you are probably in a, in, a, in a particular airport, you can have family altar even there. So, but it simply means a place in the home where you have Bible study, where you have prayers, where you have worship time every, regularly. It's a place of corporate prayer for and by the family where every member of the family learns to talk to God about the needs of the world and of their own need too. The family altar is basically a place where uh, you train, you rob minds, you allow people to do different things. I mean, you share responsibilities. Somebody will read the Bible, somebody will pray, somebody will lead the worship, and somebody will lead the prayers. So people handle different things, and then we do it corporately. So it's a place of corporate prayer for and by the family, where every member of the family learns to talk to God about the need of the world and of theirs also. So it's not just that we are having a family altar and then it's only the issues of the family that we are discussing. We will talk about the needs of the world, we'll pray about the world, we'll pray about the nation, we'll pray about the church, we'll pray about our neighbors, we'll pray about our community, we'll pray about people who are around us. So that's what it is supposed to be. And uh, it is where parents and older ones teach their children and younger ones the value of total daily dependence on god it is a place where parents and older ones those in locus parentus teach their children and also younger ones total daily dependence on god a place where they are taught informally structured but yet informal because it's not like church Somebody can interject. Somebody can ask a question. Issues can be raised. It's an informal setting, even though it's a structured setting. So where parents and older ones will teach children and younger ones total, the value of total daily dependence on God. Deuteronomy chapter uh, 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6 uh, from verse 4. The Bible says, Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Okay? Multimedia, please cooperate tonight. God bless you. Amen. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I commanded this day shall be in thine heart. Verse 7. And thou shalt teach them how diligently. If you are talking about something being done diligently, that means it has to be consistent, consistently done. Thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them. When thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Please leave it there. If you look at this, you will see that Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 7 has encapsulated everything that I said about the 
fact that there may be times of exigencies where you are not able to be in your home look at this and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and thou shalt talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk in the way we hardly walk now maybe we are in the car we are in the car so there can be a session of praise and worship and one thing can lead to the other and then questions can be asked and then scriptures can be put in every single opportunity when you walk in the way and when thou lies down and when thou rises up so every single opportunity every single privilege every single opportunity that we have we are to instruct uh, the children in Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 the Bible says trust in the Lord with all thine heart we're saying it's a place where the value of total daily dependence on God is taught trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding it says in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path now when Abraham got to Canaan the first thing he did was to build an altar unto the Lord I mean this is very instructive God appeared unto Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1. God appeared unto Abraham and said to him, Leave thine house and thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And when he traveled and journeyed, he went with Lord. And when he got to the land of promise, the very first thing he did was to build an altar unto that same God that said to him, Leave thy father's house and follow me to a land that I will, that I will show thee. Genesis chapter 12 and um, verse 7 Genesis chapter 12 verse 7 and the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said unto and said unto thy seed will I give this land and there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him he built an altar that was the very first thing he did God appeared unto him and he built an altar unto the Lord of course he built the altar to sacrifice it's also a place of communion it's a place of communication between God and and man now it was a place of worship where he and his family offered to god in appreciation and acknowledge that they as a family in their god's direction and leadership when you come together as a family in a structured manner on a daily regular basis you are communicating something to every member of that household you are telling them that it is only god that we trust you are telling them that look we depend upon god we are committing our day into the hand of the lord and when we return in the evening safely we come back to the same god and we give him thanks and acknowledge the fact that he has helped us today so the fact that we prayed on monday doesn't mean that the next time we are going to pray will be on sunday so we prayed on monday then on tuesday again we do the same thing on wednesday again we do the same thing daily total dependence so we are saying it's a place of worship where he and his family offer to god in appreciation and acknowledge that they they as a family needed god's direction and leadership when the head of the family submits unto god who will the other members of the family submit to who will they submit to when the head of the family is saying lord we depend upon you the other members of the family will know that god is the ultimate source and see in life there will be times of challenge challenges will always come and when challenges do come guess what it is what you have been exposed to that will be your first point of call i can never ever in my life it has become a thing of joke now sometimes we raise it when we you know when we gather together and we are just gisting generally and we are poking fun at uh, each other you know you raise things that people have done in the past i remember the very first time that one of our daughters will fast be, without being asked to fast we were shocked and surprised and we said what happened you know normally neko they will write it after they have written school sad uh, the the wake they will write neko after that and they usually didn't, i don't know what the, what happens now but then they don't usually take neko very seriously because it just started so they didn't take it very seriously it was why they concentrated on and all that so the moment they finish why they just take neko and all that and neko usually will come out the result will come out after the wayek result had come out so neko will come out later whether they pass it or not it doesn't really matter because they will concentrate on wayek and make all their papers and so that was 
what happened in our home but that particular year it was Neko that came out first and uh, you know like like i said they didn't take it very seriously and he's in on Neko and all that and the results were this seven this one this one ha who do we go to who do we talk to the exam that had been written no come and say prayer and fast amongst themselves friends they gather together because their lot were the same so many of them they gather together they declared fasting so why just it is i want you eat no i'm not eating i'm not eating why ah. we are fasting fasting for what our results oh. <laughs> it was very interesting so, eh? you're fasting for your result that is not the time to say it is too late to fast because you had already written the exam. Okay, your paper will not be missing. It will not be marked by a drunken person, Abby, and all that. But you see, I, we just kept quiet. Fortunately, you know, the result, the white result came out. She, she smashed the result and uh, believed that it was because of uh, fasting. Come and say Thanksgiving after the result came out. <laughs> but you see, if there was one Baba somewhere that when trouble comes, it is the Baba that the father or the mother will talk to on the phone at that little challenge as it were that will be the reference point it will be the same baba that will be referred to mommy can you give me baba's number why do you want to talk to baba ah i'm not sure how my result is going to be i want baba to pray for me so that's the importance that's one of the importance of the family altar amen now building a family altar is a vital and important practice in the christian family because it affirms that god is the center of the household and his guidance is needed daily his guidance is needed daily yesterday is gone today we are in need breathe on us did i sing it right was that you get the gist but yesterday is gone today we are in need it's a fresh a daily thing so we're saying that the building a family altar is vital and important practice in a christian family because it affirms that god is the center god is the center of the household and his guidance is needed daily genesis chapter 18 and verse 19 genesis chapter 18 and verse 19 the bible says for i know him that he will command his children not just children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the lord to do justice and judgment that the lord may bring upon abraham that which he had spoken of him god was able to say to concerning abraham and for i know him for i know abraham what will he do that he will command his children and his household after him that they shall keep the way of the lord to do justice and judgment and that the lord may bring upon abraham that which he had spoken of him now the family altar also provides a place of spiritual growth for family members particularly the younger ones the family altar also provides a place of spiritual growth for the younger ones because they learn they are exposed they are allowed to read the bible they are allowed to share their experience they are allowed to preach you know if you know me you know that i'm a practical joker i pull all sorts of pranks i you know people that will be that that will that that, that will be at the bronze are those who are close to me especially members of my household they're the ones who be as the bronze mostly of my jokes i remember one day we finished the family altar like that you know and i said that uh, one of our children i don't want to mention whether boy or girl i said one of our children will be preaching in church and that the person should get ready that the person will be preaching on sunday that i've just communicated what the pastor asked me to communicate <laughs> come and see preparation come and see preparation come and see prayer come and see bible study i didn't say a word i was having fun and then <laughs> close my eye on though shoe polished everything preparing for sunday and then saturday evening we were gathered together and then i said uh, it was only a joke if the look on somebody's eye can make somebody to die 
I was sure the look on that person's face that day could have killed me. And then one of our daughters said, you don't think, you don't think. If pastor will ask you to preach, you didn't preach in children's church. He didn't ask you, <laughs> he didn't ask you to preach <laughs> at midweek service. It's Sunday, it's Sunday. The pastor will ask you to preach. You too. <laughs> so the focus shifted from me to the person. So it became... <laughs> But that the person believed it, that this person, ah, I'll be preaching in church. Shoes, polish, everything put in place. I won't tell you that I, I, I pulled one fast one on Pastor Tony too one time. And told that she would, I was the one who was going to minister. So I knew Pastor wasn't going to tell anybody else because I was the one who was going to minister. So I just said, ah, hey, let my minister and so and so. So I said, hey, ma, ah, who would they suffer me? Oh, oh, no, let it go in. She came to church, ready, prepared, dressed well. Our perfume was extra that particular day. <laughs> and it was in the time when we shared microphone. And then she was waiting after a special number to go and preach. He saw me carry microphone. He said, Praise the Lord. But I'm saying at the family altar, that's where we develop. Because it's a family. We are family. So people can make fun of you. It won't be a problem. You, are, you, are, you have the opportunity to share the word. You have the opportunity to read the Bible. You have the opportunity to stumble and stammer. It is not a problem. You won't be making fun of yourself. I mean, you won't be ridiculing yourself before anybody. Because you are even if it's a ridicule, it's before your family members. So that's very, that's very important. Hallelujah. Spiritual matters can be discussed. Questions can be asked. It also provides a platform for younger members of the family to learn to pray without being made fun of. Even when they are made fun of, you know, it, it, it will be fun that to be in a positive manner. Like somebody praying, you know, somebody joined our family and then the person prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and we said, the prayer that you have not prayed for like three weeks, you prayed everything together. Everybody laughed over it. It's not a problem. So the family altar is like a teaching school. Can I hear an Amen. A family altar is key to build, uh, is a key building block for building up a strong family in the Lord. If you want to build up a strong family in the Lord, you cannot do that without a solid family altar. When I was growing up, I, you know, I grew up in two places. I grew up with my moms, I grew up with my dad, and all that. Different stages of my life. I didn't enjoy anyone as per the time we prayed. Because it was the first thing and it was 5 a.m. At 5 a.m., for goodness sake, one is still feeling sleepy. But they have not born you. That, I mean, daddy will have been up like around probably four. I don't know why he didn't used to sleep. Around four. And then shortly before five, he will come to the sitting room and tune the radio. And my room was next. I was living in the guest room. So my room was just next to the sitting room. So I would have had, ah, every morning I was angry. And then he would tune it and then he would walk quietly back to his room. We didn't used to ring a bell or jingle a bell. But you see, once you hear the radio on, you will file to his room to go and greet him good morning. Everybody will prostrate. If you met somebody, you won't prostrate together. It won't be two people greeting him at the same time. It will be one by one. You greet your own, he keys you. A kanyala, a sen, a dafon, a sen yoro. You will finish your own. You come out and that person will go in. And then when you finish that, as you are finishing from that place, you are going to the sitting room to sit. Everybody has a place. Up to today, I'm telling you the truth, in my own personal house, ask my wife, in my own personal house, where I sit at the dining table is where I used to sit at, at our dining table at home. That's the most convenient place for me. I don't sit at the head of my dining table because at the head of the dining table, it was my father that used to sit there. So I had a place that I sat at the dining table. And that is still the place I sit now. Even though now I'm the head of the house. Habits die hard. There is a place everybody sat. So it's not a matter of you just go there, sit down, and then he walks in. We had traditional songs for money. We had traditional songs for evening. Ajewo e shewa fun wo iwo lo le gba wala bi le ti le shudu du okun ko le se wa mo iwo e ni tiki share sha wa won e 
how many years ago did I sing that? I can never forget it. Because it was done periodically. It was done periodically. It's a place where members of the family, we, it's a building block for a strong family in the Lord. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 20. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 20. The way I'm telling these stories, maybe I will stop telling stories. Amen. Proverbs chapter 6 from verse 20. The Bible says, My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Verse 21. Bind them contentedly upon thy heart, tie them about thy neck. Verse 22. When thou goest, he shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, he shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, he shall talk with thee. When you are awake, the word that you have kept in your heart will talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamp and the law is light. And reproof of instruction are the way of life. Lamp and light. Illumination. The commandment of the word. And this is where we get it from. From the word of law. From a healthy viral family altar. The same Proverbs chapter 4 from verse 20. Proverbs chapter 4 from verse 20. Are you getting something tonight? It says, My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ears unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. For their life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Can I hear an amen? So the need for it. We have seen what it is. The need for it. A family altar gives the whole family an opportunity to be rooted in the word of God. It gives the whole family an opportunity for us all to be rooted in the word of God. It's an ideal environment for parents to nurture and strengthen their children's faith. Why? Because we we'll bring issues before the Lord and when we have testimonies, We'll bring it back. Everybody will know that in actual fact, it, it can be a thing of pride that it was so and so person that prayed that particular day. And one of the things that we should be we should learn not to do is if somebody had prayed, don't don't polish it. Don't come back and pray as a father or as a mother. And because you are saying to the person that you didn't pray well, and the person will lose confidence. It's just one day, and that prayer that you think is not well said was said in faith. God hears. So it's not necessary for you to say you didn't pray well and then you will pray it again because you are the pastor. No. So the family altar gives the family an opportunity to be rooted in the word of God. It's an ideal environment for parents to nurture and strengthen their children's faith. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 4 talking to fathers, talking to parents and ye fathers provoke not your children to wrath but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Now God, godly parental influence is invaluable and the best place to set the tone is the family altar godly parental um, influence it is invaluable because when they see you they copy you when children see you they copy you the best way to instruct your children is by example and so when you gather together in the morning and you pray together, they also will know that this is the strength. This is, our, this, this is our source of power. This is our dependence. It's God or God or God. No other alternative. Now, pressing and everyday issues are brought before the Lord in prayers. And the children learn to take God, uh, to make God their sole source of help and learn total dependence on the same God. When you now have a testimony to share and it was that child that didn't seem to have prayed well that prayed on that day it will be important for you to point it out and say remember it was so and so person that prayed that day that prayer that you offered god has answered god has heard somebody from out of the country a member of the church who's left the country many years ago sent a testimony in today and said there was an issue at her place of work. I'm sure she must have sent it to you too. Okay? Send the same thing to pastor. There was an issue at the place of work. And then she had the word of the Lord for the year. What's the word of the Lord for the year? Divine settlement. And then she believed it, that this issue will be... Today, she said, today is the fifth. That issue had been resolved. She sent in a testimony. So, at the family altar, we have an issue as a family. They are saying they will transfer the father to Lagos. And when they transfer the father to Lagos, mommy doesn't know how to drive. Who will be doing school run? Who will be doing this and all that? So, children, let's come together and believe the law that this transfer will not stand. That God will make them change their mind and all that. And you pray together because you have given them valid reasons why that transfer is not in your best interest for now. And then you pray. And then after a week, you come back and say, praise the Lord. What happened, daddy? They decided that instead of me going to Lagos, they are going to promote me and I will stay in Ibadan and everybody will rejoice. They will see that God indeed is a prayer answering, a prayer answering God. The family that faithfully gather 
at the altar daily easily creates a tradition which the children will also carry on in their own individual homes because traditions they die they they they, they die hard they, they, they die hard so create traditions not just tradition of eating today is boring i'm sure when i said that my wife knows what i'm talking about when our children were young if there is nothing exciting at home one person will just come up the day is very boring and that person will echo it the day is boring and that person will echo it the day is boring all they are trying simply trying to get when they are saying the day is boring they will not go to their mother to say the day is boring they will come to the father to say the day is boring and then i will think of what can we do i remember one of the ridiculous things we did one time was everybody got into the car and we drove from budija we drove to ui we bought granuts and, and banana and we're just telling them 30 story and then we from from you i was eating the plant the banana and the granite and at the end of the day the day was no longer so those traditions they die hard when they leave home they'll be able to replicate the same thing proverbs 22 verse 6 Bible says train up a child in the way that they should go and when he's old he will not depart from it the same uh this is second please change the second timothy chapter 1 verse 5 not verse 15 second timothy chapter 1 verse 5 is verse 5 there are quite a number of things to change um it says when i call to remember the unfeigned faith that was in thee which first dwelt in thy grandmother lois and thy mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded that it's in thee also. That means grandmother Lois was able to pass it on to her own daughter Eunice, and expectedly Eunice passed it on to Timothy. Traditions, things passed along the line. Uh, Psalm 78 from verse 1 to 8. We'll read it very well. We'll be fast about it. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears unto the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in the parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. It says, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. Can you see that? We have heard, we've known them, but our father told us. Please go back to uh, verse, okay, verse 4. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praise of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he has done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children and we are passing the same thing on that the generation to come might know them even the children which should be born that means they have not been born who should arise and declare them to their children so it will pass it on from generation to generation that they might set their hope in god and not forget the works of god but keep his commandment verse 8 the final verse here and might not be as their fathers a stubborn and rebellious generation a generation that set not their heart aright and whose spirit was steadfast with god what we are trying to say here is that things were passed down from generation to generation there, there are still up till today orthodox jews today and they still maintain those ancient traditions of the of the old testament that is what they still practice and how do they practice it because these things were passed on from one generation to the other oral tradition they were taught them their grandfather taught their father their father taught the children their children are expected to teach their own children and even generations of born the same thing will be passed along the line it's a place of worship together uh, it's a place to worship together and learn the ways of God. You know, it, it's not like church where the pastor preaches and you're not in a position to ask a question. Children can ask their parents questions and then you give them answers and then somebody else supplies. Anybody that has another opinion, anybody that wants to add to it is free to make contributions. Now, it's a place to honor God's word. A place to develop respect for and live by the word of God. You know that when it is time to pray, everything is abandoned. We give God priority. This is the time for family altar. It is not that we are having family altar and then, hello? Uh, uh, okay, mumbo. And then, um, to God be the glory. Great thing. Yes, yes, uh, yeah, I'll, be, I'll soon be out and all that. No, it's a place to honor God and give value and priority to the word of the lord deuteronomy chapter 10 from verse 12 deuteronomy chapter 10 from verse 12 the bible says and now israel what does the lord thy god require of thee but to fear the lord thy god to walk in all his ways and to love him excuse me and to serve the lord with all thy heart and with all thy soul 
to keep the commandment of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day. What does the Lord require of thee? Very simple. Amen. Now, it's also a place to establish the family in the faith. Personal conviction and doctrine. It's a place where we establish the family in the faith. We establish them in personal conviction. It's a place where we teach them the doctrines of God. It is where children in particular know and understand the God of their parents. And it makes it very easy for the same God to be their God. Because they can see, they can relate with. Every single instance become a teaching experience. Something happened to the mother in the office. We came together and we prayed about it. And now God has reversed it. We come together again to give thanks to God. And then you tell them, did we go to one Baba? Did we go and consult this? Did we go and consult that? Didn't God answer us? That same God, if you will serve him the way we are serving, if you will serve him better than we are serving, you will get the same result. You are teaching them life lessons. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter 24, 14 to 17. Uh, here, it was a kind of validity. Now therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity. Joshua was addressing the nation of Israel. And in truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood. And in Egypt before we cross the Jordan and serve ye the Lord Joshua was telling them and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord choose you this day whom you will serve whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell but as for me and my house we will serve the Lord verse 16 and the people answered and said God forbid that we should forsake the Lord and serve other gods verse 17 and said for the Lord our God he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage and which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way wherein we went and among all the people through whom we passed the oldest of them as at this point in time will be in his 40s because apart from the leader apart from Joshua uh, Caleb you know because those who are 20 and older they all die and perish in the wilderness and this was a new generation that Joshua was addressing the generation that was possessing the land. So they were quite young, relatively. But they were saying, we will not make the mistakes that our fathers made. As for Joshua has declared that, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And they also said, we will serve the same God with you. The family altar is a place where confidence is built among young, in, in young minds about God. Family problems and needs are prayed about. Burdens the children may have are prayed about and God hears and answers. It's exciting. Faith, the journey of faith is an exciting journey. The journey of faith is an exciting journey because you call upon God, you trust him and you expect to see answers. Watch that. Expect to see. And when you see, you give thanks unto God because God is a prayer answering God. And the best place to pass this across is at the family altar because everybody is shared we are one family as ridiculous as it, it may sound we pray about it as important as it may be we pray about it and our goal we answer those prayers we are very sure now it is at the family altar that we pray and intercede for others such as the pastor our local assembly we pray for missionaries the sick, the unsaved, our neighbors, our leaders, and those going through persecutions. Let me be frank with you. When my mother-in-law was alive, she lived with us most of the time after she retired. Our children didn't like it when it was grandma's turn to pray. They usually did not enjoy it. Why? Because grandma would pray about everything. Those who are sick. We'll pray in English. She will pray in English and she will be taking it slowly one by one. The children will grandma. Sometimes they will use that. <laughs> Don't let grandma pray. Let grandma pray on Saturdays. Because grandma will pray about everything. Grandma will pray about everything. And she'll be praying slowly and gently. And who are you to say grandma Otito? Grandma will pray about everything. I tell you, we pray about our community where we live and our family altar. We pray about our neighborhood where we live because it is the peace of the community and neighborhood that we also will have peace. We pray about our neighbors who are unsaved and we are getting testimonies. We see someone on our way home yesterday and we, we were still 
gisting and laughing and giving thanks to God. This man was my senior in secondary school. He was a Muslim. Pastor Kukwala knows him very well. They were classmates. He was a Muslim. But today, he's a born again Christian. Until, until lately, he, had the, he, 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 he has the most beautiful, of course, somebody has built something, but the most beautiful house. And when he was a Muslim, he was struggling. When he became a Christian, things changed. I said, God is using this man. I said, we used to pray for him. We are still praying for other neighbors who are, who are Muslims in our community. That is what we do at the family altar. We pray for missionaries. We pray for the church. We pray for the needs of Vimebrand. We pray for the church, the church of God in Nigeria. We pray for the church in Ivasa. That's what we do. And that's where children learn from. We pray for the unsaved neighbors. We pray for our leaders and those who are going through persecutions. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. The Bible says, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayer, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all goodness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. So we are to pray for all men. We are to pray for kings and those who are in authority because when they make decisions, it will affect us. Praise the Lord. Now, children who learn to pray at home will not have too much problem praying publicly. Now, the family altar also creates stronger family bonds. Different needs and pressures apply to each member of the family and at the family altar, the problems can be shared and prayed about. So we are trusting God that so and so person will be starting his or exam in a few days' time. Everybody, let us pray about it. Let's trust God and all that and all that. And we'll pray. And then when it was the turn of the firstborn, we pray. And the firstborn did well. When it's the turn of the secondborn, we'll pray. And the secondborn did well. The thirdborn will be looking forward to the time when it will be his own turn because he believes that we prayed and God helped those who are ahead of me. That same God will, will help me. Amen. So it's a place where needs are shared, problems are shared and prayed about. It is often said that a family that prays together stays together because there will be unity of faith. There will be something that everybody is agreeing in faith over. It is a unity of faith. Praying together allows for the building of closer relationship with God and every member of the family. When we pray together, it allows us to build a closer relationship with God and a closer relationship with every member of the family. Because you can ask questions. So, how far, daddy? Has God, has anything changed about what we discuss and all that? And then you tell them, so and so is the progress that we've made and everybody gives glory to God. Amen. That was the time. Even after our children had left home, there was something we needed to uh, get sorted and everybody got to know about it. And, you know, there was one particular day that, I mean, I just, it was as if it was rehearsed. This person called to ask, the other person called to ask, this other person called to ask, and it was the same standard answer I gave to all of them. I said, it will soon happen. And I'm telling you the truth, the next day, it was sorted. And it was like, it was pre-planned that every one of them prayed, they, they called rather to ask about that issue that particular day. And it was the same answer I gave them. Now, don't worry, it will be sorted very soon. And then the following day, there was the testament. I, the following day said, you know, just put it on the platform and said, it's been sorted, this had been happened, and everybody said, praise God. So, this happens when we have a regular family, family altar. Amen. So, a family that prays together, stays together, they build closer uh, bonds um, together. Now, in times of crisis, the family altar becomes the bedrock of agreement. Matthew chapter 18, verse 19. Remember what the Bible says there. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. So when we come together as a family, we have a singular purpose, we have a singular aim, that is an issue, we stand together in agreement and we are more than two, we will get results. Hallelujah. And in times of victory, it is the focal point of our celebration. The family altar also is the focal point of our celebration. So when God had answered our prayer, the next family altar, it will be songs of praise. Everybody will be excited and exuberant because we know what God did the day, the day before. A family altar is a sure guarantee of family solidarity. Genesis chapter, chapter 11, verse 6. It says, And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they, all, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them 
which they have imagined to do. That's the positive thing, the only positive thing about the Tower of Babel. The negative thing was that they had a selfish ambition. They wanted to, you know, be in one place. God wanted them to scatter and all that. But God saw the strength of purpose, the power of unity. And he said they have one language. They are united in this purpose. There will be nothing they imagine to do that will restrain from them. So if a family comes together with a singular purpose, with singular faith, singular voice, voice there will be nothing which they imagine to do that will be restrained from them. Psalm 133, Behold how good and how wonderful it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like verse 2. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, and went down to the skirt of his garment. He says, as the dew of Hammon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Now, Israel as a nation, that's a family, often neglected the altar which Abraham initially built. And it always had their consequences when they neglected the altar of god there were always there were always was their consequences captivity there will be lack they will be defeated in battle and sorrow negative things but whenever the altar is rebuilt blessing victory peace and prosperity will always result and the same thing is happening in our lives if you have not been having a regular family altar this is the time to begin if you've been having it inconsistently this is the time to be consistent if you have been consistent about it this is the time to continue amen so first kings chapter 18 is actually it should be actually from verse 19 to verse 40 we do not have time to read all that now therefore send and gather to me all leisure to mount camel and the prophet of bear 450 and the prophet of of the groups 400 which it has you know the story of the uh the prophet of bear and how they were destroyed and how the altar of the lord was rebuilt and how the fire the fire fell now the rebuilding of the of the family altar will arrest the tide of delinquency amongst our youth in particular in short the family altar will alter your family positively permanently say that the family altar will alter my family positively and permanently amen so scriptural basis as we close tonight parents are like priests in their times and have a responsibility to shepherd the flock no that's not a duty that will be carried out by the firstborn that's not a duty that will be carried out by the lastborn that's the duty of parents to shepherd the flock everyone that god has brought under your care god has given them these people and they have responsibility to take care of them so it is actually uh the, please correct the scripture it's actually first peter chapter 1 verse 14 first peter chapter 1 uh, verse 14 so please uh correct that brother please reprint this because there are quite a number of uh, corrections that have been made here as obedient children not fashioning yourself according to the former laws in your ignorance what we want to bring out here is as as obedient children as obedient children proverbs chapter 22 verse 6 says Train up a child in the way that they should go. If you do not set the example, what are they to obey? Train them in the way that they should go. And when they grow up, they will not depart from it. Now, the family altar puts God first. And so we come before the Lord before we embark on our daily activities. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. Um... This is Psalm. This should be Psalm. This is Psalm 37 verse 5. Psalm 37 verse 5. So, it's not Proverbs 37. Pro, of course, Proverbs didn't even get to uh, verse, chapter 37. So, this is Psalm 37 verse 5. Commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. So, please correct that. Psalm 37 verse 5. The family altar, it teaches us daily dependence on the Lord. On a regular contemplate the fact that we prayed yesterday and god answered doesn't mean that we are going to go on a holiday so it teaches us daily dependence on the lord the ark of the lord dwelt for three months in the house of obedidom that's also second samuel not first samuel second samuel chapter six from verse nine second samuel chapter six from verse nine the ark of the lord dwelt in the house of obedidom for three months and david was afraid of the lord that day and said how shall the ark of the lord come unto me because 
God had smitten the person, you know. So David would not remove the ark of the Lord unto him into the city of David. But David carried it aside to the house of Obedidom, the Gittites. Look at what happened. And the ark of the Lord continued the house of Obedidom, the Gittite, three months. And the Lord blessed Obedidom and all his household. Because the ark of the Lord dwelt in the house of Obedidom, God blessed him. So when you raise an altar unto the Lord and you constantly pray, you are actually attracting the blessings of the Lord. No wonder his children turn out to be very, to be mighty men of valor. I'm talking, we are talking about the children of Obedidom, men of valor later in life. First Chronicles chapter 26, verses 4 to 8. Look at that. Moreover, the sons of Obedidom were Shemaiah, the firstborn, Jehozabad, the second, Joha, the third, Saka, the fourth, Nathaniel, the fifth, Amiel, the sixth, Isaac, the seventh, uh, Peltai, the eighth, and God blessed him. And God blessed to be done. Also unto Shemaiah his son, were sons born that ruled throughout their house, the, the house of their father. For they were mighty men of valor. For they were mighty men of valor. Verse 7. The sons of Shemaiah, Othni and Raphael and Obed and Elzabad, whose brethren were strong men, Elihu and Semachiah. And verse 8. All these of the sons of the sons of Edom, they and their sons and their brethren, able men of strength, for the service were three score and two of Obedidom. Three score and two, three score, sixty and two. From just one person. Why? Because the ark of the Lord dwelt in the house of Obedidom for three months. And he taught his children the way of the Lord. And they passed it on to their own, to the next generation. And mighty men of valor were raised even from amongst his children. It is the place of teaching the next generation about God. The family altar is the place of teaching the next generation about God. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 2 as we close tonight. The Bible says, And thou shalt return unto the Lord thy God and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. Thou and thy children with all thy heart and with all thy soul. So, what is the family altar is what we have looked at tonight. By the grace of God, we'll continue this next week. Bow your heads and talk to God. If you have not been having family altar, this is not the time for us to ask you to lift up your hand, but propose in your heart that you will start it. If you've been having it and you've not been consistent, propose in your heart that from today, from tomorrow morning, we will start and we'll be consistent. Same place, it is important. Same time, it is important. Even if it's not the same time, about the same time consistently same place god will be waiting for you there